I would love everyone to give a very warm welcome to Canadian Olympian Rosie McLennan. She got the gold. And now she's here to talk to us about it. Um, and about, you know, some kind of sad statistics out there mm -hmm. when it comes to girls and sports. So I was yeah. really shocked to read that six in ten girls will actually leave sports uh, between the ages of 10 and 17. It's crazy, hey? <laughs> yeah, well, especially, I mean, as an athlete hearing yeah. this, um, it must come as a bit of shock, or maybe it doesn't, because you've been through this. You've been doing the trampoline since, what, age seven? Yeah, age seven I started, but you do see a lot of girls go through that transition, and um, but personally, I can't imagine having, if I had left the sport, where I'd be or what I'd be without it, so. Right, well, I, I want to I want to talk about your story, but I mm. also want to call attention to a couple of billboards that uh, the Dove campaign has out right now. So one of them is 112,670 Canadian girls will quit soccer because they're unhappy with their bodies. Mm -hmm. They just stop being involved and they want to, they're not comfortable, I guess. They don't have that same comfort, but it's really important to refocus that and find that passion in the sport. Well, let's talk about your situation. So, I mean, it's not like you're competing in an archery suit. Like, you're competing in a little bathing suit. There's not much to hide in those gym suits. There's not much to hide. And body image does become an issue for a lot of girls when they get to, you know, grade five, grade six. How were you affected by this, or were you? I think in many environments, whether it's in sport or other activities, like, you do start comparing yourself um, at a very young age. And when you're put into an environment that's maybe competitive or even not competitive, those comparisons can become a negative process. And that's why it's so important for uh, moms and uh, mentors to open up that conversation and refocus that. And uh, that's something that my mom was really great with me about because she would, I wasn't the typical trampolinist gymnast body. I was a bit thicker than the Russians and the Chinese, but uh, she kind of just sat me down and said, well, what do you want to be? What do you actually want to do? What are your real goals? Do you want to jump high on a trampoline? Well, you're going to need those strong, powerful legs. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of focusing in and honing in on what the why you're doing it and what you want to do. Was there ever a time where you would have considered getting out of it because you just weren't feeling good about, you know, your legs or anything, any other body part? Um, I think more general, just like white noise kind of starts to inter interfere, um, whether that's like self-doubt or questions of your confidence. But uh, it really does affect you in a lot of ways. But when it comes down to it, when you think about, okay, I'm doing this sport because I love it. I love this activity. It brings me such joy. Yeah. That's what you really need to focus on. Because if you let that go at a young age, like you're in some ways losing the chance to live your dream. Absolutely. As a young girl, though, would you communicate with your mom and say, I'm feeling a little weird about my thighs, because this is what a lot of <laughs> girls won't do. Yeah. They'll do other things, you know, they'll write in their diary mm -hmm. or maybe even some self-destructive actions, but they won't actually communicate. Did you actually communicate that or did your mom, would she just sort of watch your behavior and, and get a sense of what was going on? I think my mom really did pick up on some cues, um, whether it was, uh, like just pulling away a little bit from my goals and not being as focused on what I was really doing. And so she'd really start asking probing questions. Okay. And it wouldn't necessarily cut right to it, but just like figure out why I was acting in a particular way or how I was feeling about certain things, body image or self-confidence. And right. just um, those conversations are really hard to have at times, but uh, that's why this campaign is really great because Dove's created these resources to help moms, help mentors, start those conversations, get those conversations so that it can be in the open and you can take a proactive role in shaping the perception that you have of yourself. Right, because you know on the one hand we say of course we want our girls to stay in sports, on the other hand how much say do you have in what mm -hmm. your teenager or your young adult is going to be doing? It's true. You know, and at some point, we've always known that at some point in your life, your friends just become more important than your parents. Mm -hmm. But now with social media, your friends have a 24-hour connection to you. It's you true. are always connected to them. So mm -hmm. there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's texting, and you, they're literally, you can be in touch with your friends all the time. So it's kind of an uphill battle for parents, and that's why I'm scrutinizing you and interrogating <laughs> you as a mother. <laughs> I need to know what to do when my kids are teens, okay? Yeah, fair enough. So the other billboard I thought was really compelling, 50,405 Canadian girls will quit swimming because they feel bad in a bathing suit. 
once again, really sad. Uh, what do parents need to be doing? First of all, I guess parents need to be thinking about getting their kids in sports to begin with. Sports are just finding activities that their kids can be passionate about, whether it's music or arts or yeah. um, anything. I'm a little biased towards sports, obviously, but yeah. uh, just something that they can grasp onto where they can find that comfort and then find their own voice, too. Yes, you need to find your passion and really pursue it. And I mm -hmm. guess the parent's role is to be that supporter. Mm -hmm, you take them to the lessons, you make sure they're practicing, mm -hmm. and you make sure that they can thrive. Absolutely. Any message that you would send to a young girl right now who's thinking, you know, like I did, I left track and field in high school, I was just mm -hmm. more interested in boys. I wish yeah. I'd stayed in it. But what, what would you say to me in grade 11 to keep me in it? Um, I think I would just tell you, like, ask why you're doing it. If you love what you're doing, why would you give that up? because you never know how far you can take it. That's one thing if I've learned this year. Like, you really just never know until you give yourself the chance to try and give yourself the chance to live your dream. Very nice. You're living the dream. Gold medalist Rosie McLennan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.